Well, how about Travis Jankowski? Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Philly South Sea Video Cast Series. Kevin, in the first game of doubleheader this afternoon between the Philadelphia Phillies and the Miami Marlins as the Phillies defeat the Marlins by a fun score of 5 to 2 as they look to sweep the doubleheader this evening. Uh, awesome job out of Travis Jankowski. Uh, getting some playing time and taking advantage of it. Now, guys, before getting into this video, please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please turn the notification bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. So, uh, I'm back in action here, ladies and gentlemen, after taking three days off. And the Phils are back in action here as they now have a winning record. First time since June 13th since I had that. Um, so, uh, great job at Travis Gunkowski this afternoon. As, as you could tell, uh, I have, uh, you know, moved, uh, you know, down to the basement studio here for this video. Uh, this is a little temporary thing, just to mix it up a little bit. Uh, I'll be back upstairs uh, sooner rather than later, uh, but just wanted to just mix it up a little bit. But a good game for the Phils this afternoon. First game of the doubleheader as they look to sweep. Um, so Javis Gunkas get a big basis clearing double on the bottom of the first inning, get the fills started as we pick up the scoring summary as we run right into it. Javis Gunkowski doubles on a ground ball to right field, down the first baseline that scores Harper, Hoskins, and Gregorius. 3 nothing Phillies early. Uh, so Javis Gunkowski getting some playing time due to the Odubel Herrera injury. Um, and uh, he's taking advantage of it, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome job. Awesome job. He did fantastic this afternoon. I just love to see it, man. I just love to see it. Um, so a nice lefty bat uh, doing his job right there. And then on top of the second inning, uh, Matt Moore. I tell you, these were not the worst pitches. And, I, you know, someone's saying that at live stream, too, and I agreed. And, and honestly, I mean, especially, uh, you know, that hit he allowed to Miguel Rojas, you know, wasn't really hit, you know, especially hard. Uh, but a hit is a hit. As John Birdie doubles on a fly ball to right field. Uh, and I thought that was a lot of chance again. Now uh, Chisholm Jr. comes around to score as the Marlins get on the board. And now a 3-1 to one ball game. Um, so uh, Bryce Harper really running around out there a lot in the, you know, that uh, top of second inning. And they were talking about it. Ben Davis talking about how, you know, how easy it is to get dehydrated in that heat, right? Um, so hopefully Harp's all right. Uh, then Miguel Rojas. Uh, this is what I was talking about. He doubles on a line drive to right field. Uh, wasn't really hit all that hard. I said line drive. John Birdie comes around to score. And then the Marlins now, it's just a one-run ball game. Now a three-to-two ball game. Um, so they push now two runs on the board. Um, so, uh, man, the Marlins, I mean, they're coming back in this inning, right? I mean, that would be it for them. Um, but I wasn't really feeling, you know, overly confident at that point of the ballgame. Matt Moore, not, not like the worst start today. I mean, he was really ranking up the strikeouts again a little bit later. Uh, but he settled down. And then bottom of the ring, Travis Junkowski does it again, man. He did singles on a line drive to left field the other way. As uh, Reese Hoskins comes around to score. As the Phillies get a run back, it's now a 4-2 to ball game. Um, so awesome job right there out of Travis Gonkowski. And then Ronald Torres in the same inning. Uh, singles on the ground ball to center field. D.D. Gregorius comes around to score. It was now a 5-2 ball game. And the Phillies are going to win that score 5-2 final score. As they take the first game of the doubleheaders, they look to sweep this evening. Um, so hopefully they can. Uh, Gene Segura out of Elias Pat collecting the one hit. Bryce Harper uh, with that double down the right field line. Also scoring the run. Awesome job from Bryce. Uh, but there's two other at-bats, unfortunately, it just didn't really work out for him too well. Uh, but uh, Reese Hoskins, he did draw that walk, and he did score two runs, which is nice to see. Uh, but uh, Travis Gunkowski, your Phillies has to play the game three for three, four RBIs. Unbelievable. He's the reason why we won this game this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so Travis Gunkowski did his job this afternoon. Ronald Trace also with the RBI single. Um, so uh, definitely been a good uh, asset for the Phillies. Um, so he just love to see that Matt Moore four and a third six hits two runs and two runs were earned and didn't walk about it He struck on nine in just four and a third. He struck on nine. I mean, that's really impressive I talked about it. he's really ranking up the strikeouts. So, you know, good job on Matt Moore this afternoon I mean, he wasn't perfect, right? Um, but uh, I mean, I was, you know, going on live stream saying, oh, he's washed. He's terrible, right? I mean, which is I still think he is washed, but uh, <laughs> uh, But uh, you know what? I mean, he did fine. I will give him that he did he did fine You know striking out nine four and a third that's really impressive. I mean, he wasn't making the worst pitches. He wasn't. Even, on, like I said, that Miguel Rojas double. It wasn't really hit especially hard. Um, so, uh, he did his job well this afternoon. Um, but, uh, Brownchie Bradley also did fine. Inning and two-thirds, one hit. And uh, he did very well. Uh, and Ranger Suarez. He does it again, ladies and gentlemen. His third save of the season. An inning, one hit, and three strikeouts. Uh, so, he's able to get the job done for the Phils again. Again. As his ERA now is down to 075. So unbelievable out of Ranger Suarez. He just continues to be amazing for the Phils. 
Uh, so we win the first game of the doubleheader as we have the we, we have a winning record for the first time since June 13th of this year. Um, so uh, unbelievable. Um, so it's been uh, over a month now. Um, so uh, we finally do that. So we got the game two this evening, and uh, we got Zach Eflin four and six with a three eight eight ERA, and going against Detweiler one and zero with a four three two ERA. So the time you're going to be seeing this video, the second game is already going to be underway. At the time of the recording, I'm actually just recording uh, right after the game. Um, so I pretty much just hit the record button like immediately after the game. Um, so uh, some little takeaways from this afternoon's ball game. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it. I'm going to go back to Matt Moore again. I mean, nine strikeouts and just four and a third innings pitch. Four and a third. He already had nine strikeouts. One thing that, you know, the whole pitching staff has done really, really well this year is with the strikeout department. I mean, it's been very, very good. See what Zach Weaver's been able to do. I mean, look where he is. I mean, he's, he's a strikeout machine this year. Um, so uh, I tell you what, I mean, awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, so it's striking out now. It's very, very promising. And Archie, Archie Bradley, I mean, I, I tell you what, I was very, was that not promising right there? I mean, that was great. I mean, that was, that was an amazing appearance right there. A very, very encouraging appearance. Uh, awesome job. And Ranger Suarez, too. I tell you what, another guy that has just been um, awesome out of the Phillies bullpen. And he has just been awesome. Um, and uh, listen to this. Ranger Suarez hasn't allowed an earned run in 19 of his last 22 appearances this season. Think about that. I mean, that's crazy. That is just crazy. Um, and yeah, he has 19 Ks in his last 13 innings. Uh, so there's no question this guy has really been the guy to stop the bleeding in this bullpen, especially, you know, especially in the back end of the bullpen. He's really done a good job at helping to stop the bleeding. It's just been bad. It's just been really, really bad back there. Uh, so it seems like the Phillies have found their guy, uh, and that guy is Ranger Swords in the back end of the bullpen to solidify that closing spot. Uh, which was just so hard. It was so hard to, to find somebody because no one really would step up and do their job. So it was just, it's nice we finally found somebody for that job. Now, this does not mean that the Phillies should stop at the deadline. Absolutely not. I'd be, I'd be very, very upset about this, right? Um, so uh, I'm, this is, you know, kind of my next topic. I am so tired uh, of, you know, the buzz. You know, I don't care where it is, on Twitter or on, you know, through the Phillies front office. or I am so tired of hearing the rumors about, uh, you know, this offensive, you know, uh, acquisition possibility. It's like, you know, with uh, Trevor's story, whether that's you know, maybe in the offseason, you know, Carlos Correa or, you know, Chris Bryant's one that's going on right now. I am tired of hearing it, ladies and gentlemen. Enough of that. Enough of that. We do not need any more offense. I mean, we just don't. We just don't. Uh, you know, not, I mean, especially when the biggest need is pitching. We need another starter. We need a Kyle Gibson would be amazing. It's probably not going to happen. Um, but uh, we need another starter, and we need more arms in that bullpen. And, uh, you know, the Craig Kimball thing, I see where people are coming from, uh, you know, with the Craig Kimball, uh, you know, possibility. But, I mean, I, that's not happening. I mean, that's not happening. I don't really like that contract. Uh, I, for one, do not like it. I, I'm on record saying it. I said that on the live stream today. I'm not a fan of that contract by any means. And I'm surprised uh, that uh, they uh, gave away Jack Peterson to the Braves. I mean, give away, but uh, yeah, I'm surprised that they're selling. I, I am. I'm very, very surprised that the Cubs are selling. I mean, you know, Chris Bryant's definitely gone. Uh, you're going to see him, you know, in two weeks, he's definitely going to be on a different team. Um, so it's crazy, man. You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of different things are happening. Um, so uh, it's crazy. I can't believe the Cubs are selling. I mean, uh, you know, that 11 game losing streak really, really did him in. It really, really did him in. Um, so, uh, it's just crazy what's going on with the Cubs right now. Um, so, uh, you know what? I mean, uh, that, that's my message to David Gombrowski. I mean, stop with this offensive, you know, talk with the, oh, you know, we're interested in, you know, you know, uh, you know, Trevor Store. I mean, w w I can't even tell you how dumb this would be if we, if we gave away all this, all the, I mean, we all know. That the foreign system isn't great. Now, let's say we gave away, you know, so many of our top prospects for Trevor Story, who's going to be a free agent after this season. And uh, we just let him let him leave. Just let him leave after this year. And then all of our prospects are in, uh, you know, Colorado. I mean, this is not 2018 with Andy Machado. This is a different story. This is a different story. This is, this is totally different. Uh, no pun intended. A different story. I, I wasn't trying to be funny. You know, since I'm talking about Trevor Story. Uh, right, I, mean, I just realized that. Um, but to, seriously, though, I mean, like, it's just, it is. This is a different. This is a different thing right here. Um, so uh, enough of this. I, I'm tired of it. I, I'm tired of hearing the cra same with Chris Bryant, and he's way too hot and cold. I mean, you saw what he did last year. Way too. I mean, I like Chris Bryant a lot, especially with the Bryce Harper connection. With you know them playing, you know, you know Las Vegas together. I, you know, there's there's connections there. 
Um, but, uh, you know, I went to the same high school, but I just don't like it. I just don't, especially when you can get a guy like Kyle Gibson. I, I like that way better. I mean, you're going to give up some prospects, you know, get it for an arm, uh, you know, a couple arms. You know, that's, you know, another starter, which we need. Uh, I talked about it in the midseason review. And some other guys in that bullpen, which really need some work. It really needs some work. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so enough of this. I am, I am just so tired. I mean, it, it frustrated me a little bit when I heard it. It really, really, I, honestly, it did frustrate me a little bit when I heard it. Um, so uh, I, I'm tired of it. That, that's all I'm going to say. I mean, focus on pitching, pitching, pitching. Enough of this. Enough of this. Um, so uh, going back to a little bit here, uh, you know, about the Phil's. I'm going to talk a little bit more about Ronald Torres, what he's been able to do. I mean, uh, this is the kind of guy, you know, who, you know, went into spring training without a lot of expectations. I think we all thought, you know, like what happened in 2020. I mean, I, I didn't think anything of it when we signed this guy, the minor league deal. I didn't think anything of it. Um, and uh, we all knew that, uh, you know, how well he did in 2017 with the New York Yankees. Uh, but uh, we all thought that was, uh, you know, just a you know, thing in the past. And, you know, that was just kind of a fluke or anything like that. But you know what? He has been great. I'm going to keep saying it. He's been very, very, you know, good for the Phils. Uh, you know, he's kind of a part-time player. I mean, he has really done his job. You saw that interview he had. I believe it was in Boston. Uh, you know, how you know, how highly he was speaking to the Phillies organization, how, how proud and thankful he was, you know, to be put on the Phillies cap and, you know, wear the Phillies jersey. I mean, that was something awesome. That was really, really nice to see. It was kind of touching, too, because he, it was, he was legitimately – thankful he really really was he was legitimately thankful so I just love to see that around the I mean awesome job uh and uh, you saw he's done out in the field awesome job I, I couldn't I couldn't be more proud of him um so a uh, great job out of Ronald Therese and Shane goes to Travis Gronkowski I'm gonna say it again too um and he's done really really well too so some of the fans not real happy that JT into uh, was not starting in game one you have to realize here and he is starting game two uh, you know, since game two will be going on when you're seeing this video, it, it's very hard on the catcher's knees. It is. It's very hard on the catcher's knees. Uh, just to talk a little bit about at the All-Star game in the home run derby, I'm going to switch over to this a little bit. I, I, I said I was going to talk about it. I'm going to be talking about the Phillies draft picks at the end of the second game recap. Um, but uh, just to talk a little bit about this. Uh, yeah, so the Phillies uh, did send JT Mutu and Zach Bluer to the All-Star game. Of course, as we know, and uh, J.T. Mutu, uh, one for two, uh, strikeout, and a solo home run to right center field. Uh, that was great to see. First Philly to home run in an All-Star game since Mike Schmidt. Uh, outstanding. And then you see Zach Wheeler only throwing three pitches, uh, which was uh, a pitiful. And we were like, oh, well, it's just because they want him to start after the break and, you know, and all this all this malarkey. And did he start after the break? No, he did not start after the break. Um, so, uh, yeah, there goes that. He's going to start on Sunday. Um, so you're telling me he couldn't have thrown just one inning? Uh, yeah, uh, I, mean, I don't think so. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Uh, at least JT Muto did something exciting. The NL lost again, right? I mean, the NL never wins in all-star games. We all know that. The AL just has another year of dominance as Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is named the all-star game MVP. And then you see Pete Alonso winning the home run derby. Um, so a little all-star game updates right there. I just thought I'd mention it. Um, so I thought it was important for me to talk about that. Pete Alonso just went off again, right? Um, so back-to-back uh, -back years uh, that he's won the home run derby, right? I mean, they didn't have one last year, of course. And then uh, back in 2018 is the last time we had one, and uh, he won that as well in Cleveland. Remember that? I mean, that you know, insane round against Vladimir Guerrero Jr., the final round. That was simply amazing. That was really good for the game of baseball. Um, so uh, the All-Star game, you know, was a little bit interesting this year. I do not like how uh, they all wear the same uniforms. I did not like that at all. Uh, the NL had their uniforms, and the AL had their uniforms. I don't like that. I, I liked it when, you know, the players, you really represent your team, and I liked it when the players used to wear, you know, their, you know, like, you know, JT Mutual would wear a Phillies jersey there. And, of course, it said PHI with the logo, but it just looks like, looks doesn't look good. Uh, I don't like it. Um, so, guys, if you're to watch this video, push subscribe. If you haven't done yet, please do notification bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video. Check out the social media link in the description section. At Phillies Hats Adventure Game, check out the Instagram, car text 267-225-3392. Email me. Um, so a second game of the doubleheader uh, getting ready now. Um, so Eflin Detweiler. Um, so let's go, Phil. Let's sweep the doubleheader. I will see you all this evening. Guys, thanks for watching. I am Luke, and I'll talk to you later. Let's go, Phil. I'll see you again.